Okay, in this video, we are going to interface the SCAMP2 board to our time of flight range sensor, the TOF10120, which you can see here. Now, the SCAMP2 board has a PIC microcontroller on board, which you can see right here, running Flashforth by Michael Nordman. Now, there's two other ICs on the SCAMP2 board. There's a temperature sensor IC and there's a GPIO expander IC, which is driving the 16 LEDs. Now we can measure distance with sound, ultrasonics, or with infrared, infrared uh, emitter and detector, but this time of flight sensor uses a laser. So it has a laser emitter and a detector, and the beam width is a lot narrower than infrared or ultrasonic sensors. So next we'll plug in our USB connector on the very right here, and it will power up the SCAMP2 board, and I'll demonstrate how this works. Okay, I have my SCAMP2 board powered up, running some code. And I have my sensor right here. So if I put my finger out of range and then come into range, you can see it being sensed. And I'm using the 16 LEDs as my display, my output display. So you can see it's actually measuring the distance between my finger and the sensor. And you can also use it as a tilt sensor. So if we tilt it down, the greater the angle, the more LEDs we get. Okay, on the back of the sensor, you can see it has an onboard microcontroller, which does all the calculations. So you don't have to do any calculations in software. It actually outputs the distance directly. Now the range of the sensor is 1800 millimeters, or 180 centimeters, which is 1.8 meters, which is around 6 feet. So all you have to do is read the serial port, which is UART compatible, or the I squared C port to get your distance measurement and I'll read it out directly in millimeters. Okay next we're going to have a look at the pinout of the TOF10120. Now there's six wires and they're numbered one to six starting from the right so this is pin one and this is pin six on the very left. So pin one is ground, pin two is VDD, could either be 3.3 volts or 5 volts and we'll be using 3.3 volts from the SCAMP2 board so it's compatible. Pins 3 and 4 is the UART output, so pins 3 is RX data, pins 4 is TX data, which we're not going to use. Pins 5 and 6 is I squared C bus, so pins 5 is the SDA data line, and pin 6 is the clock line. So those are the pins that we need. We only need 4 pins, pins 1 and 2 for the power, and pins 5 and 6 for the I squared C bus. Okay, next, we are going to have a look at my wiring hookup from my range sensor to my SCAMP2 board. Now I connected my range sensor to my breadboard using an 8-pin dip socket where I soldered on a dual row headers and then I connected the DuPont connectors onto those dual row headers and plugged into my breadboard. And then I'm running wires to the SCAMP2 bus. So I'm snagging 3.3 volts from here. You can see 3.3 volts in ground. That's powering the sensor. And over here is our I squared C bus where SD and SCL lines are connected. So those are the four wires that we're connecting to our sensor. So now we're going to have three devices on the I squared C bus. We're going to have the temperature sensor, the GPIO expander, which is driving the LEDs, and our sensor, our range sensor. So we'll hook it up to the computer, and we'll do an I squared C scanner, and we'll see what address our range sensor indicates. Okay, I have TerraTerm up and running on my computer, and it's connected to my SCAMP2 board. So if I hit return, I'll get an OK prompt, and if I type about, that's our hello screen. And you can see John Kasoulis is the designer of the SCAMP2 board, and Michael Nordman is the author of Flashforth. So if we type modules, they'll run our I squared C scanner. So we have three devices on our I squared C bus one at hex 27, another one at hex 37, and the last one at hex 52. Now, hex 27 is a GPIO expander chip. Hex 37 is the temperature sensor, so our time of flight sensor is Hex 52, so we'll use that address in our code. Okay, here's the code running on the SCAMP2 board, and it's very simple. So the program is called question mark distance, so we run that whenever you want to get a distance measurement. Now the code has two I squared C commands, so here's the first one. There's our start, and there's our stop. So that's our first I squared C command, and our second one is right here, this is our second start and our second stop. 
So first of all, we request to do a write at address 52, and we're going to send a zero to the sensor. Now when we send a zero to the sensor, that's a request for a distance measurement. So it's going to take a distance measurement, so we wait for 10 milliseconds. So now we're going to read back two bytes. It's going to send us back two bytes. Now this two drop, when we sent 52 write, we got an act back. And when we sent zero send, we got an act back from the sensor. I'm not doing any error correction, so I'm not using them, so I dropped them. So we, do, we don't need them. So our second I squared C uh, sentence is our start. So now we're going to do a read at address 52. And I'm, I'm dropping the act that I'm getting back. And here we're receiving our first byte, and I'm sending an act. And here we send, we're receiving our second byte, and I'm sending a knack because that's the last byte. And then we do a stop. So now I have two bytes on the stack, one high byte and one low byte. And I have to make that into a 16-bit word. So I take my high byte and low byte, and I do a swap. So my high byte is on top. My low byte is on the bottom on the stack. I shift the high byte eight times to the left and I'll or it with the low byte and that will give me a 16-bit word and that will be my distance in millimeters. Okay next we need some code to test our sensor so I wrote some code called tof.test right here it's very simple it's a begin until loop so this is a continuous loop so we start off with a new line carriage return then it's gonna print the distance it's gonna take a reading a distance reading and print it to the screen and it's going to do that over and over again until I hit a key on the keyboard, any key on the keyboard, and it will come out of the program. So that's a way we could test uh, our sensor. It will give us a continuous readout, and then we can move our hand back and forth, and we can see the distance change. So we'll run this uh, program on the SCAMP2 board, tof.test, and check out our sensor. Okay, I have my program up and running. And I'm going to run the word question mark distance, which is we're going to request a distance reading from the sensor and then it's going to print it out so I'll do that, I'll hit enter so we're getting 50 so I'll just copy that and we'll do it again so my sensor is just sitting on, on the bench so this is the reading I'm getting 47 millimeters so that's how we could get a distance reading so next we're going to run the, the, the test program tof.test now it's doing it continuously. So I'll take my sensor. So that's 2000. And I'll put my hand in front of it. And as I come in closer and closer, you can see getting smaller and smaller until I come right up to the sensor. Zero. I'll back away. It's getting larger and larger. All the way. It's hitting my back wall, which is which is 2000. So that's how we could test our sensor with very simple code. Okay, if you type words at the OK prompt, we'll get all our words. So I'll do that. So you can see there's some words that are familiar. There's about, and here's all the I squared C words. So there's start, is read, write, receive, send, act, knack, stop. So all these are supported in the SCAMP2 board. On the very bottom, you can see that these are the programs that I wrote, question mark distance and time of flight dot test so those are the two words that i wrote for te for testing and for requesting uh, distance measurement so that's our code there everything that you need is actually on board it's all you have to do is just write the simple code to activate and set up your time of flight distance sensor okay so that was my little tutorial on how to connect a range sensor up to the scamp 2 board and it's very easy to do because all the words needed are supported on the SCAMP2 itself. So all you have to do is just write some simple code. And if you're a student, you could come up with some very neat robotic applications.